beating arguably one of the best players in the world on the TV table in front of a huge crowd. And this is exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> oh my oh. God, drama. What kept it's that ball on the table? It's not over yet. Shane, it just doesn't doesn't look like anything is going right at all for Shane right now. He's fighting it. Yeah, he still was able to manage it. Great shot by Shane. That was a miracle for him to be able to even come back to the table. Yeah, Absolute let's, miracle. Listen to the fans, they're not ready to go home just yet, but Martin Degg has to feel that he had one foot over the finish line. He just had to drag himself over, but look at that miss. Uh -huh. How did that stay on the table, he's asking himself. And you want the picture of a suffering man? You just saw it. And Shane Van Boning, it's life after death. He's got the chance now to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And how difficult will it be for Martin Degg? Will he get another chance? Will he get another one as good as the one he just threw away? And is Shane that much stronger because he feels he's playing a man? Just can't quite, can't quite get over the finish line. So many storylines. And Van Boning still can't buy a ball. Well, he got one off the break this time, and the, actually, this looks pretty good. I was looking for a ball. Ah, uh, there it is, the three in the top corner. I didn't see anything go down, but he landed nicely on the one. I thought, oh, the same storyline, but no, a chance for Van Boning. But I'll tell you one thing. When you're parked in your chair, Martin Degg, right now, with every ball that Van Boning makes, he gets closer to overcoming that lead. It is gonna be difficult for Martin Degg to swallow. His mouth is gonna taste like sandpaper. Absolutely. I don't know how about you, but I do believe in pool guides, and I feel like sometimes when you miss the opportunity to close up the match, it seems like everything's going against you after that. It's like it's almost like pool guides are punishing you for not using your opportunity to finish the rack. You see Martin Degg leaning over right behind Shane Van Boning's cue. Doesn't look like an ideal angle for the eight. It looks like he's like a little bit too straight. Well, he, he's all right. It's good that he has his extension so he can actually reach balls like this. Go on to rails. Well, Margaret, I hope you've buckled in because this roller coaster ride isn't over yet. Absolutely. 7-6. And you start to feel like this one is going to go right down to the last ball. Like you said, you got to have a short memory, and Martin, I hope that he does, because this mistake, it can eat you alive from the inside, you know. Just hope he doesn't allow it to mentally break him. He looks pretty calm. Yeah, he's just had <laughs> a big chunk of chocolate. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, something to take his mind off recent events. Yeah, you know, just focus on presents and chewing on something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of the tricks that you can use for sure. Kind of like take your thoughts away from what just happened. Shane would love to have an instant replay of the break he just had. And he might have just got it. Yeah. He's taken a lot of power off the break, Margaret, not even close to as hard as Van Boning can hit them. And he's found the measure of the table. Yeah. You know, it's all about adapting to different conditions. Best players in the world can adapt the best. So they will, they eventually figured it out. The nine ball is kind of tricky. Do you think he would try to bump the nine right now? Going from six to the seven? Uh, I'd be taking that cue ball awful close to that side pocket. Yeah. No, nope, he's not gonna go for it according to his tip position. I'm actually very curious what's going through his mind and how he is going to solve this situation. Does the eight ball go off the nine in the side? The nine ball looks a little too far from the side pocket. Oh, okay. Keeping it simple, I guess. He's got to be careful here. Yeah, he's not sure about that. He knows it too. Mm -hmm. This it is, is tricky. Very, very tricky. Beautiful shot. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> well, they will if he gets to 7-7. Seven, seven. And he has. Well. 7-7, seven, seven, Margaret. I don't think many would have predicted that score. It's getting more and more interesting, that's for sure. He's won the last three in a row. And now, one more good break. He doesn't want to sit down now, does he? Definitely it's not. All in front of him. And you talk about an escape, a great escape. For the second time already. The first match was very similar situation. He was like six to three down, I believe. And then he just used a few opponents' mistakes in his advantage and managed to come back and then beat the guy 8-6, I believe. Yeah. Nicely done. He put a lot of power into this one. The mentality is when it doesn't go my way, I'm just gonna hit it hard and pray for some balls to find the way to the pockets. Because to be honest with you, when it is a referee rack with a triangle format, there's not everything in your control. And sometimes you hit them perfect and you still don't make a ball, right? So you can't really control which balls you're going to make. So you have to hit it hard and just pray for some, something good to happen. One thing's for certain, it looks like Daig is going to get out of his chair. That wasn't Shane's best positional shot unless he's going to try and flick this in off the side cushion, which is a possibility. Yeah, Shane is using a... Nice aiming system to kind of like mirror the distance between the ball 
and the rail. It's going to call the two ball. High risk, high reward. That's actually a good shot because even if you miss it, beautiful shot. Even if you miss this ball, you're still going to leave a safety option. Well, I take it back. I said that Big was going to be getting out of his chair. Maybe <laughs> not. It all depends on this one shot from three to the four. Well, four eight combination possible. Um, Certainly the safety. A very real possibility. Yeah, I think he will be able to stick him behind the eight if he decides to play safe. Just roll the four ball forward. Is he really going to go offensive in this situation? But, you know, who am I <laughs> to judge? Yeah, this is exactly the shot I was thinking about. Uh, it's been a while since Martin Degg has come to the table. And he's welcomed the total eclipse. So he's going to have to negotiate this escape. Yeah, in this one, it's always good to go to a rails instead of one because there's so much more good things that come out, can come out of it. And if you go two rails, you can actually get a shape for the next ball, which is six. Let's see what he left. Oh, wow, you can see him slamming his cue. He's obviously upset left the opening for Shane and he knows that Shane for sure is going to use it. Uh oh. Wow, to be honest, like his bridge was very awkwardly short. He was bridging off the rail, it was way too short. A very different look for him. Yeah. For sure. He usually uses a long bridge almost all the time. So I feel like he he was just almost like uncomfortable in the shot. Well, Martin definitely got his shot again and it was a beautiful kick shot with a perfect control. Couldn't do any better. Yeah, everybody, it's white knuckle time out there. These are very tense moments. If you're a Van Boning fan. I would call the 10 in the side, just in case. Yeah, this is a chance, another chance for Martin Dag to seal the deal. It is not easy, but it is doable. Pretty good speed. He would probably prefer the cue ball to roll a little bit further, but you know, that will do. Now just really stay present and focus on making the six. And stay still. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh my goodness. It did look like he missed it. <laughs> I see, that's the thing, like if you go into the rail with the new claws on a wider angle, as long as you don't jab at the ball, it's going to go in. Ooh, that can get really tricky. Look at Shane, <laughs> I think he, he knows that he still might have a chance. Natural angle is gonna take this cue ball over to the other side. Yeah, so he's playing with low outside. Oh God, I really don't like the shots on the new claws. Nope. This one is not going to go in. Look at all the people's reaction. Oh my God. He really did let Shane to get away with it twice. He's gonna feel horrible. 
The pillow will feel like a brick tonight when Martin oh, hits yeah. it. Oh yeah, I bet. Well. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> nice face, Shane. <laughs> well, now you have to go for the bank. No, I honestly, he crushed it. He absolutely crushed it. And there is like, I can't even <laughs> look for an excuse. <laughs> Let you know how they feel. An escape act that Houdini would have been proud of. Shane Van Boning, an 8-7 winner over Martin Daig. Tough lines for the Canadian. Well done to Van Boning. And Margaret, that was quite one to commentate that on, was, wasn't it? That was unbelievable. That was so exciting. And I hope you guys enjoy it just as much as we did. Well, it was a lot of fun, folks. We're going to be back with a lot more action. But for Margaret, I'm Jim. We'll be talking to you again soon. See you later.